Hi everyone. Here we are in the middle of an actual plague. And I've been thinking so much about the Passover story, you know, the most famous narrative of the Jewish people and how it feels particularly relevant right now. I wanted to share a meditation practice that we can do at this time or at any time really, but um, where we can kind of uncover some things in the Passover story that we don't usually look at. That could be an interesting way to sort of workshop our own lives right now and hopefully find a little bit of comfort and peace and support at such a crazy time in so many of our lives. So before we jump into that, I wanna just give a little context about the story of Passover. So it's this incredible story, an incredible metaphor really, of the Jewish people's journey from bondage and enslavement in Egypt to freedom and liberation. What I always come back to is that the word for Egypt in Hebrew, Mitzrayim, literally translates to a narrow space. So the whole story is really telling about how we move from constriction and constraint to spaciousness. And that feels so relevant right now to me. And I think, and I hope to you too. So usually when we focus on the Passover story, we spend a lot of time on, um, you know, the good guys, the main characters. Moses, Aaron, Miriam, we look at their bravery and strength and wisdom and faith and trust. Um, and we don't spend that much time on the antagonist in the story of Pharaoh. Part of it is because we kind of dismiss him as just, he's just bad, he's evil, and it doesn't seem worth our time. But I think it is. And I think that if we spend a little bit of time looking at some of the pieces of the story about Pharaoh, it's actually annoyingly relatable, and it can be really relevant and resonant in our own workings of our own hearts. So I thought that we would start there. So there's 10 plagues, right, that befall the people of, of Egypt and the land. Before the first plague even starts, the story tells us that God tells Moses that God is going to harden Pharaoh's heart. Interesting. That's new. <laughs> that feels new to me. That's not something that we usually focus on in the story. And so the way the story continues is that through the first five plagues, Pharaoh hardens his own heart and won't let the Jewish people go. So streams turn to blood. Everyone's covered in frogs, lice, flies. All the livestock die. After each plague, Pharaoh's ready to relent and then changes his mind. His heart hardens. He hardens his heart. And the story says that Pharaoh saw that there had been relief and kept making his heart stubborn. So I want to pause there for a second and ask if you can think of a time where you hardened your own heart, where you didn't want to yield, you didn't want to soften, where maybe, and it's hard to admit this sometimes, but it felt good to be rigid, to be stubborn. There feels sometimes like there's strength in that and so I think it is relatable even though sometimes we don't want it to be right this idea of hardening our own hearts so then for the next plagues the story tells us that then God steps in and God hardens Pharaoh's heart so there's a there's a shift that's interesting so through boils hail locusts and darkness Pharaoh remains resolute as his people and the land suffer like really truly suffer so why does God do this why not let Pharaoh let the people go? It's not until the last plague, the death of the firstborn, that Pharaoh relents. And so that makes me think a lot about what does it take to soften a heart? And I also think that it's relatable, again, not only to this idea of hardening our own heart, but that sometimes it feels like our heart just hardens. That sometimes it feels impossible to forgive or open our hearts to someone or soften or yield. And I know that I've definitely felt like that, but something just stopped me from being able to do it. And this is why I think it's helpful to think about Pharaoh and to ask what does his experience in the story have to do with us? So sometimes hearts just harden. Sometimes it's our own doing. Sometimes it feels like it's out of our control. Sometimes it's conscious. Sometimes it's not. 
I think what's usually going on is really just that we want things to be different. We want people to say or do things differently. We want our own selves to react differently. And we're so resistant to just what is. And this is a feeling of being stuck. This is another kind of bondage and another kind of enslavement. And so I think that we can use a meditation practice to kind of unstuck ourselves, that we can open our hearts and maybe do a little bit of work to try to release ourselves from this kind of bondage and find some liberation.